Okay, welcome back to Michaela's questions. And I'd like to end here, Michaela, with um, uh, what is it God wants of us? What is it that the Lord wants us to do and, uh, and to be? I mean, what is it that is going to please his heart? And, and to please his heart doesn't mean that that gives you all of the pleasant things of life and life without troubles. Sometimes to please the Lord's heart, he wants us to grow and to mature into his, uh, into his image and likeness. Sometimes he wants to just delight us. Sometimes he wants us to, to uh, uh, for our heart to expand it in love. And so he'll bring us uh, someone in our lives to teach us love, a mate, and then later on uh, children. Or uh, he will just bless us in such a way that we know it was his personal touch in our lives. And all of a sudden we, we break down in weeping and joy and, and, uh, and our hearts expand it in love. But many times, as a matter of fact, the vast majority of the time, the Lord speaks through his word to us and speaks to us through somebody, through somebody uh, preaching that word or, or bringing the word to us or those precepts to us. I'd like to end this section of Michaela's questions with Psalms chapter 37, starting at verse 1. I'm going to read for a while, and I want you to let the, to let the word of God go upon your heart and speak to you and, and for it to be put deep within your soul, uh, never to leave again, it will answer many of your questions. The Lord speaking to, to David in this song, and he says, Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not, uh, uh, be not envious toward wrongdoers, for they will wither uh, quickly like the, gra uh, excuse me, like the grass and fade like the green uh, herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. To delight yourself in the Lord, Michaela, means to be honest with the word, to be honest with the Lord, not just to go along with the flow, not just to go and be a, a, a Sunday school teacher or to attend church a certain number of uh, times a day, like we can do that in lockdown now. But... Um, uh, it, that's not what it means. Delight yourself in the Lord means be before the Lord. Pray, seek his face, read the word, uh, worship before the Lord. Put on your headphones and good worship music and go before the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of, of your heart. Verse 5, commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will do it. So commit your walk, commit your day. Commit your, your, uh, uh, the work of your hands. Commit everything that you do to the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord. And then uh, uh, he, will, he will establish your path. He will show you the way to go. Uh, he will bring forth uh, um, uh, righteousness through you because of that path. And it says so in verse 6. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Amen. Verse 7. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing. For evil doers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. Wait on the Lord. Be at peace. Don't worry about somebody else's life. Don't worry about what happened in your past. Forgive and move on and make your, your job, your focus, uh, waiting on the Lord, being before the Lord, speaking to him as you walk, speaking to him as you, as you wake in the morning and when you go to sleep. Verse 10, yet a little while and the wicked man will be no more and you will look carefully for his place and he will not be there. That's right. Verse 11. But the humble will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. Verse 12. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees his day is coming. Listen, what this is saying is, and, and when the Lord says in verse 11, 
But the humble will inherit the land, will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. People use this to teach a prosperity doctrine. Don't fall for that. It's not talking about prosperity in the flesh. Because prosperity in the flesh tends to make people forget God. Just like children, we get a new toy and we sit and we play with our toy and we forget the one who gave it to us. Uh, and the Lord doesn't want us uh, in that place. To inherit the land and uh, to inherit uh, uh, ben, abundant prosperity, Jesus describes that to us and says, you haven't given up anything in this life that it isn't returned to you 10 times over in the next. The land that he's talking about is, uh, if you've ever watched The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, it's called Aslan's land. Aslan is Jesus. It's his land. It's his land that never ever will uh, fade away. It's his land where you want to own a piece of it. It's his land that you will inherit. And it's in his land you will uh, experience great prosperity in God. And you also will experience prosperity here on earth. And what do I mean by that? Prosperity in money and, and change and lands. No, prosperity in the Lord. You will get more and more of the Lord in your life. And as you seek the Lord, you find out that the Lord is good. You'll also find out that he will meet all of the deepest desires of your life. And you will feel totally rich, even though you're sitting, uh, uh, maybe even living in a car. You still will feel totally rich in God. And, uh, um, and in your life will, will find true meaning. Your life will find its true place in God. Verse 14, the wicked have drawn the sword and bent the, their bow uh, to cast down the afflicted and the needy, to slay those who are upright in conduct. Their sword will enter their own heart and their bows will be broken. So in the end, the Lord will bring back on the wicked everything that they've sown. Whatever a man sows, he also reaps, but reaping on the other side. So whatever is done to you in this life that is, uh, is wickedness, don't sit in bitterness and, and, and blame and rage, but instead forgive, walk on knowing that they, if they do not repent, will face that very thing done to them that they did to you. And nothing is lost in God. When we enter into judgments on the other side, you'll find nothing is lost, okay? Both good and evil. Verse 16, I'll end here. Better is the little of the righteous than the abundance of many wicked. So again, showing that in the natural, in the flesh, better is the little of the righteous in the flesh than the abundance of the wicked. Far better is the abundance spiritually and emotionally of the righteous than the, uh, the abundance materially of the wicked. Okay, I'll leave it there. I encourage you to uh, read the rest of Psalms chapter 37. And you'll see it will bless you tremendously. Okay, I want to uh, move on now to uh, the next question in Michaela's questions. And, um, and that question is, why are there so many different churches? Why, who's right? And I've had this asked over and over and over again. Who's right and, and, uh, and who's wrong? You know, I, I've been studying um, uh, genetics from a creationist uh, standpoint. And, uh, and it's fascinating what I'm learning. And uh, uh, it, it's just amazing to see the handiwork of God in that our, our, our bodies really are, are uh, designed uh, by perfect design in a computer program that is uh, incredibly complex. And, um, and that it is uh, designed to be finite. Uh, and uh, it only has a certain amount of time to its uh, existence until uh, our, uh, our genome actually will break down and people can't reproduce anymore. And, uh, and our human species is over on the earth. We see this has happened to other species all around the planet. They've gone extinct, not because their habitat um, uh, so much because a lot of species, most all species, can adapt tremendously, much more than we've ever known, uh, to a change in habitat. It's because uh, they, they have broke down. Their genome is different and, their, and everything is limited in its uh, existence because this whole creation is limited. This whole creation is only de designed to last basically 7,000 years. 
And so a uh, little wonder that the human genome is designed to last about 7,000 years. So, um, so it's just, it, it's amazing studying this and seeing this. But there's something that is uh, incredibly important, and that's this, that to study uh, um, uh, um, the, the human genome and, and uh, genetics uh, at all, you have to be incredibly um, honest with it. You have to just go by the science. You can't uh, change the science. Uh, you have to go with the numbers and as they lay out, or uh, the end result will be an error. And uh, there is no changing it because genetics is a commuter, computer program. And uh, you have to go by the ones and zeros or the, the four letters, uh, I can't remember them exactly. Uh, you have to go by them uh, uh, perfectly and honestly or your conclusion uh, of uh, your study will be an error. And uh, so there is no changing it. The word of God is the same way. It's exactly the same way. If you change it, um, then you're an error. And now your error starts off maybe very small, but it can go very, very, very wide because one uh, demonic lie will lead to another and to another and to another. And so um, uh, it's, it's amazing that there are so many different demonic lies out there. But when you think about the, the devil trying to disrupt the pureness of the word of God, it's not so surprising. He's out seeding sows of, uh, of lies. He is the father of lies, uh, and he's been doing so from the very beginning. And, um, and we'll talk about a little of these lies and where they came from in the next videos. But let me just say this. Um, in the modern era, uh, it, uh, it began with the formation of the Catholic Church in 325 uh, AD. But really, in our creation, it began with Adam and Eve, when the devil came to Eve and questioned what God said. God told them very simply, don't eat of this tree, this one tree, even though it looks good to eat, even though the animals are eating from it, and it's a beautiful tree, here's your command, don't eat from it, and the day you eat from it, you will know good and evil, and you will surely die that day. So the devil came and said, hath God said this? Well, that's not true. Uh, he just doesn't want you to be like him. He doesn't want you to grow too fast. So the devil forms his lie. So Eve sits there and goes, oh, is that it? Well, I want to grow up quick. I want to have, I want to be an end creation. I want to grow uh, up to the end result. The God wants us to grow into his image and likeness. I want to be there right now. And so that's why she partook of the tree. Because she said, she believed the lie, hath God said. And time and time again in, uh, in church history, that same lie is brought to mankind and they buy it. We still continue to, to take the same bait that our mother Eve took. Uh, and uh, we haven't changed. We haven't grown up. So um, I'd like to explore that a little more and give you a few examples. For example, in uh, 325, with the formation of the uh, Catholic Church, uh, Greek philosophers were the first bishops who were brought in to help formulate the church. The church was a, was a political uh, um, entity, uh, and Constantine, the emperor, the Roman emperor, was talked into it so that he could unify the entire empire under one world religion. And uh, that one world religion is called Catholicism. Catholic means universal. It is the universal religion and uh, that was ordered into existence by uh, the uh, Emperor Constantine. And uh, from that day, they began merging Christianity and, uh, and paganism into a one world religion. Immediately, they have broken the word of God. When the Lord has uh, commanded them uh, over and over again to not mix the worship of his uh, of himself with the worship of the pagans and their idols, which are actually demon spirits. And, uh, and mankind ignored the commandment of the Lord and began mixing into a giant pot uh, the universal religion. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. Let me give you one hint of it. The worship of the goddess of fertility, Isis or Astarte or Esther, is also called Easter in Europe and uh, uh, the European nations. 
and uh, the goddess of fertility is worshipped today by Christians as the goddess of resurrection or new life, which is fertility. It's still being practiced today. Okay, we'll talk about that again in a moment. 